Your next challenge is to name the top five guns of Squid Game. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms. We're obviously here to discuss the top five guns from the Netflix series, Squid Games. That's why I'm dressed in this ridiculous pink outfit, because once again, I apparently signed a contract. But uh, anyway, before we even roll into this, we've got some legal stuff to go over, so let's go ahead and hop right into that. Some of the content and trademarks we are going to show you today in this video are not ours, and this is not sponsored by any other company. We are not affiliated with Netflix in any way. We just wanted to take a deep, deep dive into the firearms they used in filming of Squid Game. So without any further hindrance, let's go ahead and hop right into it as I hop out of this. Uh, no. What do you mean I know? But you gotta keep it for the rest of the video. So rolling into our number five pick, the Walther PPK. But it's not really the Walther PPK, it's a, uh, it's a lighter. You can't really tell, you might be able to hear it. It's a butane lighter. In the, <laughs> in the, <sh> <laughs> In the show, uh, spoiler alert for any of those out there, by the way, uh, this is obviously shown when uh, the main character is giving his daughter a present and didn't realize what the present was. Thankfully, it was just a lighter. Now, what's kind of funny about this Walther PPK right here is the fact that it also, for a magazine, has an included little knife. Anyway, the Walther PPK, the real one, however, is not shy of the uh, big screen or any screen for that matter. Of course, we all know the Walther PPK, the little 32 ACP guy as being John, James Bond's, you know, firearm of choice, nice, compact, concealable, and obviously, uh, well, he's a double O agent, so of course they have the best gear, right? But anyway, the Walther PPK is number five on our list, even though technically it's a lighter. And, and not a gun, but let's go ahead and move on to our number four pick. Next up for our number four in our top five guns of Squid Game, we've got the Smith & Wesson, well, series, because it's all essentially a Model 10 that you see kind of carried around by some of the higher ranking guys. You got the circle guys, which are at the bottom of the totem pole. They're just workers. They're not actually carrying guns around and stuff. You got the triangles who are actually carrying some firearms and they're called the soldiers. And then you got the managers, which are the squares, right? It's, it's pretty wild. And uh, it's honestly a great show so far. I'm actually really enjoying it. But uh, anyway, those are your hierarchy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's why I was wearing my hat like this. There's supposed to be like a little emblem, whether it be a square, a circle, or a triangle, depending on what your rank is. You just gotta watch the show and figure it out. It's a wild ride for sure. But anyway, we do see the Model 10 being used by some of the squares. We also see the Model 19, but at some point too, it's mentioned that a Model 60 is being used when in fact that's actually incorrect because as we can all clearly see, the Model 10, Model 19, they're not stainless. And the Model 60 is the one that's actually stainless. And so uh, none of those are that. So uh, anyway, that's just how it goes in movies and videos sometimes, but that's all right. Because at the end of the day, it's still pretty awesome and I'm still very much enjoying the show. And I do love the Smith & Wesson Model 10. I personally have had the Model 10 and I think it has one of the best triggers in a revolver. I absolutely love it. They shoot great, chambered in 38 Special or even 357 Magnum, depending on the actual you know, chambering, obviously, what, it, what it's rated for, what, can, what type of pressures it can handle and whatnot. But anyway, the Smith & Wesson revolvers, that's our number four. And number three, let's go on with a, Another classic, how about it? For our number three pick, it's a gun that needs no introduction. Back-to-back -back World War champ and carried by the front man, the 1911. Now obviously the front man in the show is carrying more of a stainless 1911, but if I was a front man, yeah, I'd be rocking a, a gold boy like you see right here. The 1911 is chambered in 45 ACP and it is one of the most popular iconic, recognizable pistols ever made. And there have been several different variations of the 1911. Uh, Colt has made literally different series. You've seen tactical models. You've seen all sorts of crazy things out there. You've seen even newer ones called like 2011s, which are double stack and like polymer framed and lighter and 
9 mil, 38 super, all sorts of different chamberings. Man, these things are just, they're awesome, right? Are they old? Are they obsolete? Well, that's to be debated, which I'm sure you guys will do down in the comment section. The 1911, I believe, at least a few of them belong in everybody's collection, so uh, yeah. But anyway, number three on the list, the 1911. And you know whenever you see the 1911 come out in the show, it's not going to be a good day for somebody, unfortunately. But, you know, it is what it is. Maybe they shouldn't have been in such bad debt or whatever. Anyway, let's roll into number two. My number two pick might be even more iconic than the 1911, the MP5. The MP5 that you see in the show is a phenomenal firearm. Overall, it's just a great gun using that roller delayed action, chambered in nine millimeter, built and designed in the 1960s is still timeless. And that's why we just keep giving them away like what you see here. We'll talk more about that guy later though. Anyway, in the show, you'll actually notice some of the guys rocking a Picatinny mount to mount an optic, but choose not to have an optic. I guess at the ranges in which they're using them, it's not exactly a long range, so... Anyway, the MP5 is a fantastic fire. Now, of course, all the guns we have here are either the HK SP5, HK obviously being the manufacturer of the MP5. The SP5 is the civilian imported variant, or like the gun that you see right here, which is actually the Century Arms AP5. Cool little imported guy coming from Turkey. They shoot well, they feel great, and they're more of that Navy style with the collapsible stock in the show. This is manufactured as a pistol, imported as such as well. Same as that guy, so this is not a stock. This is actually a brace. But anyway, my number two, the MP5. Now you might be wondering, what the heck else is there? Because there's actually not a whole lot of firearms used. In fact, all five that we've talked about today are pretty much all the ones you see. But my number one pick, I think you're gonna like. My number one pick is arguably the one that has eliminated the most players. The Knight's Armament SR25, the CAC 11 Mod O, suppressed. Now what you might be thinking is, where was this featured in the game? Episode one, absolutely ridiculous where a majority of the players get eliminated, spoiler alert, and uh, <laughs> and let's just say it's, it's, it's wild, right? But what we've done is we've taken a quite a deep look at it, and uh, thanks to help on the internet, by the way, uh, it appears to be the Knight's Armament SR-25, which is a fantastic rifle. I love this rifle, especially with its QD suppressor. It is just, it's a fantastic rifle. That's all there is to it. Chambered in 308 or 7.62 NATO, super accurate, great little DMR sniper system, right? That's what they call the SAS system, the semi-automatic sniper system. This thing wrecks, and boy howdy, did it wreck in the very first episode. So the gun that you've seen the least, but is responsible for the most damage, the Knight's Armament SR-25. That is my number one pick. Now granted, the MP5 is a fantastic platform, and I love it, but I don't, I don't have an SR-25 to really play with and, you know, shoot, which sucks. But uh, anyway, if you're watching, you got one you want to donate to the channel, well, just let me know. With that being said, speaking of donating, how about giveaways? Uh, let's talk about the current giveaway, which is an aforementioned firearm, the HK SP-5. Again, the civilian variant semi-auto uh, that is imported from Germany, which is pretty cool. However, Though it may still only be semi-auto, it does have a Franklin Armory binary trigger. So it has one position, two, and three. And what's really cool about this is it'll go bang when you pull the trigger and bang again when you release the trigger. If you're trying to figure out how that's legal, which it is, go ahead and watch our video announcing this as our giveaway. There's also, as you can tell, a couple of other attachments that we've thrown on here. And I've made this, arguably, the best home defense setup. So we've got the SP Tactical Stabilizing Brace for the SP-5, great. We've also got the Knight's Armament Tri-Rail on this guy. We took off the regular little rail like you've seen on this guy here. Very easy install, by the way, super secure. I like it a lot. But we also threw on a Surefire M600 with the Mod Light Mod Button by Unity Tactical that you see right there, very cool. And I'm a big fan of UTG's angled foregrip. It looks really good on the rail. It's nice and slim, doesn't take up any space. Well, I mean, obviously it takes up rail space, but it's not so thick that it's just uncomfortable or cumbersome. Very, very comfortable. Now, the other thing cool is we've got the BNT optics mount here, and the optic I decided to go with is actually the Holosun 
403B, I wanna make sure that was right. Two, two MOA red dot, but what's neat about this guy is it has what's called the shake to wake or shake awake technology. And this is why I think it was perfect for our home defense setup. In other words, if you've got it sitting on a nightstand all night to save the batteries after a couple of hours of non-use, it shuts off. But the moment you pick it up, the red dot is on. So I think that is actually a very neat feature. Coming with two 30 round mags, it's a really good time. So again, head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries. Don't miss out on this giveaway. Go check out our video announcing it as our giveaway. In fact, that's one of the entry methods, so don't miss out on that. And I'll leave it out after that. If uh, you guys have seen any other firearms that maybe we missed somehow because I was too intrigued by the show to pay attention to what was going on, uh, let me know down in the comments. Do you agree with the list? Do you agree with the standings? Let me know what you guys think, but I'll leave it off there again. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And I'm going to go get out of this ridiculous pink thing. We'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.